coming up on the next episode. Good Thursday morning to you all YouTube. It is 10.03 now in the a.m. Uh, I am here working on the little bastard and I want to tell you something. I found out why they call it a little bastard. And if this is not the reason it should be. <laughs> First let me show you what I took out of these four tantalum capacitors. I'm just not much on these. I have to have the right thing in there, so let me show you those. There you go. One, two, three, four. Oops. <laughs> One, two, three, four. And there are the replacements for them. One, two, three, four. And so those are all in place. I don't know if you've seen that, but uh, there they are. One, two, three, four. So there are that. Okay, there are that. That made no sense. But that's the way I talk sometimes. Um, <laughs> okay, so here is what the, the, the little bastard part of this is. Now i got to get some extra light here on this so you can see. I'm going to point at it. This is the volume pot, okay? There's the uh, on-off switch. That, the two posts there are the on-off switch. The other two terminals of the uh, volume pot itself is on this side, but that gray looking thing down right underneath there that is C3 that is the audio coupling cap which transfers the uh, audio from the volume pot to the audio amplifier now uh, I'm going to take a guess and say that never got replaced and if it did I'm amazed but no, that's that's the original gray. You can see the grayness. That's uh, that's not a new cap. So I'm going to guess that's one of the big problems of this radio right there. Um, and in order to get that out, this has got to come out. And I have yet to figure out how to do that either. So let me turn this around a little bit. This is uh, like a mounting for it, but I see nothing on the bottom where that solders to. There's no, there's nothing on it. So I'm not really sure. So that's going to be a pain in the butt. But there's the other two terminals I was talking about on the uh, volume pot. And I don't know where the wiper's at, unless that wiper is the, the center, which I doubt. But um, I'll have to take this. I'm, it's going to have to come apart. You can, you can kind of see that uh, uh capacitor in this way too if you look underneath the uh, volume pot the gray so that's that's where it's at and that's got to come out there is no way around that so uh, anybody who was uh, doubting that uh, the reason why they would call this a little bastard I think that is the reason that little bastard there's got to come out <laughs> So uh, uh, there's your there's your update on this, and uh, like I said, uh, it's going to take me a while to figure this out, but figure it out I shall. Uh, I did do some preliminary checking on this uh, with the, after I replaced these four caps over here. There is no seemingly no radioactivity at all on this. Uh, I hooked power to it, and I could detect no radio. I, I thought I had some static, but even that was questionable on whether it was really static or not. That doesn't want to. There must be another washer on that because that doesn't really fit too good there. Anyway, but uh, so that's my next challenge. And anybody knows how to uh, get that out, let me know because I tell you what, that is something. That is something. So. Again, this has to come out so I can get to that uh, cap right there. You can see it. You can see it pretty good there. Uh, so, that's the challenge. I'll see what we can do, I guess. Alright, I am back again. It's 10.58 now in the morning. Um, <laughs> you can see I do have the volume pot out. Uh, thanks to Bob. He uh, made it very clear that the, these tabs here 
There's a here. Uh, get that back out of the way. Tab here and a tab here. Uh, this one was soldered. Um, was what was holding that in. And it, you can see it's just the tabs there in the middle. It looked to me like this whole thing was connected, but it's just those tabs. So there you go. You can clearly see the uh, coupling cap now. Um, so got to uh, take that loose from both ends and get the uh, new one in there. And once I can do that, then I can put that volume pot back, and I should be good to go. Uh, I want to try my best to figure out if I can what's what here. Um, difficult to know. This is a, not a typical volume control on a transistor radio, but uh, again, it has. <laughs> doesn't seem to have enough leads to it, or maybe, I don't know. Um, these two here are probably audio because, you know, connections as far as, as, far as that's concerned. Uh, I think the ones on top, now you, you can see there's a red wire going to this one here, and I can't tell what that is, but uh, I think those are the power wires. Pretty darn sure because if you follow this around here, it comes right back to... The, uh, so you can see that move when I move that around. So that's the power wire, obviously. These two terminals, as I said before, these two terminals here are the power switch between those. So um, the only thing I can figure is maybe this is the third lug? I don't know. You've got the, uh, uh, you know, maybe this is the ground lug? I don't know. Uh, maybe one of these is a wiper? Uh, again, I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to trace the wires down. So all you can figure, all you can do is trace the wires down. So, uh, but like I say, I want to get the uh, cap out first and get that replaced. It's only a five microfarad, so it's not a big deal. But uh, again, need to get that done. Um, so, what else is there? Now this here, I thought was part of it. This red wire here, it connects here. I thought that was part of the volume control, but it's not. Uh, or it may be, but I mean, it's not connected to, uh, that's one of the leads for this, looks like the interstage uh, phasing transistor or transformer. That's what that looks like, so not really sure where it goes. I've, I've got to do some tracing on this to figure out what's what, because I've, I've got to know so I can feed a, 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 what do you call it, a signal in here and know where to put it at so I can get, test this uh, audio amp. Now this audio amp should work right now. Uh, the only thing I've done is to take out the uh, tantalum uh, capacitors and replace those with E-caps. Uh, very clear that this is all ground here. This is the ground symbol. On, I've looked at the schematic. And so I know all those are in right. They're all negatives on this side. And so and they were very clear on how, where they went to on this side as well. Now this one here, this trace here, pulled up a little bit, but I've got it down... When I put the lead to, I, I bent the lead over this way to hold the uh, trace down at the same time. And so it's in good and solid. And the two here are good and solid. So all that should be good. Now, once I get the uh, coupling cap done, I should be able to turn the uh, radio on and get uh, some sound out of it. I've also tested the speaker, thinking maybe that was the problem, but uh, it tests good. So I don't know. Like I say... Uh, if this coupling cap doesn't do anything to it, I'm just going to have to go into it whole hog and, and start from the beginning and trace out all the circuit and find out what's what's the problem is. I don't know if it could be a bad transistor, it could be a bad resistor, it could be a lot of different things. Um, you know, the problem. But uh, this is our first step, getting this one out and replaced. I think... I'm trying to figure out if that goes... I think that's a yellow sleeve right there. I'm gonna have to get a closer look at it. But anyway, I just wanted to bring you up to date on this what I'm doing, and uh, so you can see. So I'll come back again when I have more. Ah, oh, welcome back once again on the uh, little bastard radio. Uh, I am making some progress. I uh, am able to feed feed in a signal now at the uh, high side of the volume control and get audio out. So let me demonstrate that real quick. So, 
one of the biggest problems so far has been the, the uh, <laughs> terribly messed up uh, circuit uh, underneath. Uh, let me see if I can explain. Let me unhook this. Get this all unhooked. And I can explain a little better than I think. Let me turn this off. Um, basically, the audio amp was not working at all. Excuse me. And uh, the reason was, let's explain this. I tried to do this on, on the uh, schematic as well, but uh, basically, the uh, this this wire. Uh, Hard for me to see. This wire, these two wires here, the green one and the white one, are the uh, inputs to the finals on the uh, output transistors. These are the bases. And this one was lumped in with this ground here there was no way it could work so I cleaned all that out and got that working these uh, these are the emitters tied together here and go to a 10 ohm resistor to ground which is correct that was messed up uh, that was not right this circuit here or this uh, trace here had lifted off and I got it back down resoldered and retouched up some other solder points and got it all back together and uh, so it is now wired up as it should be and you can hear that it works so there's one big problem uh, the uh, I do hear static in the very very faint static in the uh, speaker so that's a step in the right direction obviously um, so just got to figure out where the radio signal is going to now, and uh, then we should have uh, our radio back, I hope. But at least that's a good progress. Good enough for today. I'm, I'm happy with the uh, progress because, it, like I said, it, uh, it went from not working at all to basically the audio amp working. So anytime you can do that, you uh, have a better chance of troubleshooting the radio port then. But, yeah, this radio was pretty messed up. So... Uh, like I said, the uh, got the uh, all the caps replaced now with new caps, and uh, everything is good there. So basically, like I said, it's just uh, a matter of troubleshooting the radio portion now, finding out where our problem is with it, and we'll have to feed in uh, signal into the uh, antenna, the uh, IF frequency at 455, and see what if that comes through. And if it does, then we'll go from there, but at least we'll know that that works. And uh, that would seem to indicate if the radio is not working, then maybe the oscillator is not working. So anyway, we're getting closer, and I'm happy with the uh, results. And uh, the, little <laughs> the little bastard will live on. <laughs> Bill, will you hear that? Uh, <laughs> so uh, like I said, uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, I am working on this, and it is... It's coming together. So, uh, you guys that are wanting to see this, this is uh, part of it. So, uh, the rest of it will be coming later. But like I said, it's break time right now. I've been at this since, well, since at whatever time I told you before in the last update. Uh, I've been sitting here all along, uh, conversing with Bob now and then uh, about this and that. Excuse me, this and that. And, uh, like I said, just taking my time and trying to go through this... Uh, circuitry match it to the uh, schematic once I did that then you know wasn't too bad uh, but this this part here was the big, biggest mess uh, because like I said what with the base grounded out on the um, one of the outputs there was no way it was gonna do anything uh, I was getting I could feed in a signal at the uh, volume control and get it to come out the speaker or not speaker but the uh, each, each different point on here, I would take my signal tracer and I, I was getting it through the transformer here and I could feed one through here and it would come out the speaker and so you know it was working that part of it so it was just a matter of the amplification there was no amplification because of the uh, the messed up circuitry so alright that's gonna do me
I'll be, be back when I have more. Ah, oh, good late afternoon to you all YouTube. It is 5.30, or, oh, I'm sorry, 5.26 now in the p.m. Uh, what you see or hear in front of you here is the uh, baler um, 6, little bastard. You can hear that is the uh, HP uh, signal generator generating a 455 kilohertz tone or signal with a tone and you hear I, I can turn it up or down here so you can hear it's making it through the radio just fine so that means that the radio itself seems to be working now I did notice while I was playing around with it a while ago if I pressed a certain spot I got some different things like this one here you hear that? So I'm not really sure about the significance of that or even what that is but to me that kind of suggests that we have a problem with the oscillator. Oscillator is not running because it doesn't matter where you tune it on the dial that 455 will get through and it, it it's not exactly booming but it's at uh, minus 7 db dbm and uh, I can go lower but uh, that's 17 minus 17 you can still hear it but just barely so basically what I'm, I'm saying is that it, the radio part is working and uh, that means that uh, that part that much of it is working so so what I'm going to do is basically start fooling around a little bit with uh, checking some voltages. I, I talked to the uh, seller of this uh, radio um, in the an email uh, right after I got it, uh, the audio working, and he said the uh, six and uh, I think it's six and a half uh, minus six and a half volt source is down to three three volts. I think is what he said, something like that, minus three, whatever it was. But I uh, need to probably check that, find out. But uh, again, it is working now. So we're just it's just a matter of troubleshooting the uh, part out the, with the uh, oscillator or whatever it happens to be. And that should fix the radio. Should. So we're going to hope that's the case. Anywho. So that's that, and I'll bring you back if I have any more. All right. Uh, good evening, YouTube. Here on this uh, Thursday, I believe it is. Yes, it is, according to the computer, anyway. Uh, not being one to cover up my mistakes. <laughs> yeah, I made one. Well, actually more than one. Um, <laughs> you know, when I put these uh, caps in, I just naturally assumed that the negative band of the capacitor went to ground. Not so. Not so at all. These are, uh, as I've learned since, this is a positive ground system. So, that makes the ground positive. And uh, so I had to pull every all four of these out and change them around. Now, the one that was in the, uh, that I had to pull the uh, volume pot out for, I just replaced that just as it was sitting in there. In other words, uh, the positive was one end, the negative was on the other end. And it's a coupling cap. It shouldn't matter that much. But I, I replaced it just like it was. So if it was right, then that's right. So anyway, these are all in right now. Um, like I said, I don't know if I, if I did this. I think I did. Let me do it again just in case. This is the... Uh, as you can see, that's the... Uh, antenna loop from the uh, signal generator and I have turned that on and I'm going to turn this on you can hear that works very well so basically what a, what's the deal is on this we, we've got going uh, 
455 kilohertz the IF frequency going through the radio. In other words, it's getting through the RF into the IF and then being detected by the detector. So all that part is working. The part that isn't working is before that. And I can't say that it doesn't work because uh, if it didn't work, it probably wouldn't get that far. So in other words, uh, what I'm trying to say <laughs> trying to say is I think it's the oscillator myself. Now that's just my opinion. Obviously we all know what opinions are like. But anyway, <laughs> um, so that's where I'll probably take up. I, I think I've about had enough of this today. Um, I worked on it this morning quite a bit and then uh, putting in the uh, capacitors wrong. <laughs> and, and then straightening out the audio section. Got that all working. Um, as you can hear, it works fine. Um, so, next thing I probably will do is, like I said, I'm going to look at this schematic really good this evening while I'm sitting there nice and relaxing. Oh, I, oh that was the other thing. I did, while I was uh, had the uh, uh, meter going, I uh, decided to go ahead and check some voltages. That's what got me on the uh, path of, of positive ground. I had the uh, negative lead of the voltmeter hooked up to uh, ground. And... I kept coming up with some weird voltages, and I'm thinking, what in the world is going on? Even though I knew they were supposed to be negative, they were positive, and I'm thinking, well, that can't be right. So, anyway, uh, after some thought and consideration about what I was doing, I, I've redone some things, and everything is hunky-dory. It, it works just fine. Uh, I have, uh, as far as, now, this battery I'm using here is EBL uh, rechargeable. I think they only put out around 8.4 volts uh, at max, even when they're charged up fully. So uh, you'll have to know, you'll have to kind of understand that the, the voltage is going to be low. So the main uh, source, uh, which is if you look at the schematic, let's see, I think it's number 32 or something like that. Let me double check because I don't want to give you some false information here. Yep, number 32. Should be a negative 9 volts. And if you measure that with the negative lead of the voltmeter to ground, and that source is negative 8.2. Uh, so again, that's uh, either way, with the switch on or off, doesn't much matter. Uh, it doesn't really draw that much current. So, uh, like I said, that's correct. And now I measured the uh, uh, 6.5, or minus 6.5 volt source, number 7, and it was 6.1. So those those voltages are right on the money and uh, for for what we have here for what the voltage we're putting in that's that's good so there should be no problem at all with uh, voltages now that's not saying that every voltage is getting to every transistor that it's supposed to you know how that works uh, it could be a bad resistor it could be anything in there uh, so that's what we're going to be focusing on first is the uh, oscillator circuit and if that uh, if that proves to be okay, uh, well, well, we'll go look somewhere else. But I'm kind of suspecting that uh, it won't be. So <laughs> uh, that's uh, pretty much it for that. Uh, I, normally, I would take and, and uh, use uh, I, I use the uh, what am I trying to say here? The oscillator here on this radio to see if it mess up another oscillator. I'm not really sure if I've got another battery. I'm gonna have to look. I may try that. And see, let me, let me, let me look, and I'll come back. Okay, I couldn't find another battery-operated set, so we're gonna try this. It is tuned to well, open frequency, I guess. What you'd say. You can hear how that changes when I tune that. That's usually a pretty good indication that the oscillator is running on this radio. Not always. Let's try it there.
basically what I'm saying here, something is affecting the tuning on this radio here, and it's usually the oscillator, not always. I say not always because it has been proven that the radio, and I'm going to try that again. Let me try it one more time without the battery. Now, if I get a significant change like I got last time, we can assume that the only thing that is affecting that is the tuned uh, the uh, antenna, and uh, so that would make mean that it's not really doing anything. So let's try it again. See? There's absolutely nothing on there. That's just the me tuning the dial that's doing that. So I'm going to say that's probably not, the oscillator is probably not running. And uh, so, like I say, there's no battery in there. There's no power getting to it. Has, actually, it has more of an effect that way, I think. So there you go. That's uh, that's a pretty good sign that the uh, oscillator not running. Uh, so that's what we're going to go with. And like I say, I'm going to look at the schematic this evening and see just if I can tell um, maybe you know what to be looking at. It's so hard to orient yourself on a, on a little radio like this because everything is just bunched together, and uh, you know you just kind of have to uh, do the best you can and. Uh, work from there. Use the uh, good thing I've got a SAMS on this. Uh, uh, that was provided with the radio so uh, I was able to, you know, you get the, the test points and the circuit trace and things like that on the SAMS where that helps you pinpoint things like on the back side here. You can, you can look at that and tell where to where do you put your test probe and things like that and find out what you're getting. Uh, we'll read the voltages on the uh, oscillator transistor see what kind of voltages they are. If the voltages are correct, we may pull the transistor and see if it's operating or if it tests good. So there's the things that we're going to try to do tomorrow or whenever I get to it. I don't know if it'll be tomorrow. I really hadn't planned on getting this in today, but um, I got started on it and didn't want to get finished with it until I was done with it. So uh, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> so. We're going to end this here. Uh, I'm going to post this probably Saturday. Just speculating right now. Trying to, to fit some of these things in. Uh, these other projects that I've got going uh, in between other projects. Major projects. Uh, these are what I call minor projects. So, any of you guys have a pleasant, pleasant evening. Thank you so, so much for watching. And we will see you.